Hey buddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome to Let's Play Civilization 6 in our Emperor tutorial series. Uh, I do have to say though, I am a little bit sick so do please excuse this. Uh, when I came back I have a little bit of a chest infection. I was hoping that I would be able to sort of wait it out but I waited a few days and as they say the show must go on so I'm going to record this video even though I'm sick. I'm anti such a wonderful content provider. Uh, we're going to I have to take a moment here to reassess where we were because it has been like nearly a month since I played the save since I went away to Texas, which was awesome, by the way. Uh, let's see, 50% discount. I think I may as well just slot in. Although if I'm building Renaissance walls, military research can figure in really nicely um, here. I have Renaissance walls in a lot of my cities, so this would be a lot of science. And right now, science is what we're hurting for the most. So it definitely makes sense to plug in military research. I still like logistics and professional army. I don't think I'm really building an army. I don't like Machiavellianism, Merchant Confederation. Although I could probably swap out Merchant Confederation for something uh, a little bit more useful. For example... Uh, let's see. Plus one production in all cities might actually suit me a little bit better while I can still use it. That little bit of production can make the difference. And I can't remember exactly what our plan was, but I think... Um, so, one of the questions I got a lot in the comments was, why am I leaving France and America alive? And it's a very simple reason. So basically, uh, when it comes to culture victories, you can earn up to... Uh, so, who do I use an example here? Let's have a look at Teddy, right? Teddy has 15 tourists, 15 domestic tourists. And what that means is I can get 15 tourists from him until, and then I can't get any more until he earns more himself. And those 15 tourists will count towards my victory condition against whoever has the most, who is, um, who is it that has the most? I can't see. Ah, John Curtin. So those 15 will count against John Curtin. If I were to wipe Teddy Roosevelt out, I would lose those 15 tourists. So I want to keep those because they just help me win, uh, is essentially it. So basically how, how it's supposed to work is if you kill a civilization, it's not supposed to matter. It'll adjust the cost of tourists down so you'll get more tourists per turn. Um, it's supposed to be like 200 tourism per civilization in the game. But currently there's a bug in the game uh, where it sets it to be like 1200 or 1600 no matter how many civs are in the game. So you actually earn more tourists the more civs are in the game. Now I'm not sure if that bug has been fixed or if that has been accurate, but I have tested it in the past and I believe it still is the way that I, it still works that way. So you want to have as many people alive as you can possibly have. And right here, do we still, we don't have, I think we've already surpassed, yeah, we're already all the way up here to ideology. Now, the question is, am I building the important wonders? Let me double check here. I'm building the Crystal Red and Tor over here, and we want to get this guy, if we can. And another question people were having was, why am I building so many industrial zones? Well, pretty much just to get this guy. So I need to save up. Uh, a lot of money or something, so we'll see about how we do that. I would like to get the Crystal Red and Tor, and I'd also like to get the Eiffel Tower, which is what I'm working towards right now. So, uh, I think we're going to harvest here. That'll speed up the production of the medieval walls. Um, we may as well finish these here and get the medieval walls done sooner as well. Uh, do I want to upgrade this galley? I think I do for the option to search for um, city-states on the second continent because right now I'm holding on to a lot of envoys because there's not a whole lot of city-states that I want to be Suzerain of. I think I could maybe become Suzerain of uh, these guys. Full housing from water. Oh, Stockholm actually might be a good one, but I'd have to spend 10 envoys to get that. So I don't know if that's worth it. It could be worth it to go up to three in Toronto. Because I do have a few workshops around and a few industrial zones, so I think it'll be worth it to put three in Toronto. So here's Ludwig van Beethoven. We can't really place his thing yet. We have a spy here. Um, we want to look for somewhere where we can steal the most money. 144, 144, 150, 360. 
generally speaking, their capital is going to be the place to steal. I already have a spy over here. Uh, Anchor Thumb, 618. That's going to be the place to steal from. I'm pretty sure no one else is going to have much more than that. Um, this is a great writer. I'm going to want to look for an amphitheater. <coughs> Looks like I don't have one. So I'll just get him to wait there while I build some stuff. And we have Filippo Brunicelli. Um, one card I should have plugged in, actually, was the 15% production towards Industrial Era and Later Wonders. But we can do that in three turns anyway. I might hold on to this until then. And we were planning on... Were we really planning on taking New Orleans? Hmm. Do we really want New Orleans? We've already invested a lot into the attack, so we may as well. I'll just get you to wait a turn. My scout has arrived. You can go start scouting this continent for city-states. She's quite happy that I am pious. He would like to make peace. I think... I think I'd like to take a city and then trade it back to him for more. Alright, I'm at war with John Curtin. Derp. I don't have open borders with him. I can go into his borders because I'm at war with him. <laughs> uh, we're going to shoot here. And then shoot here. We'll wipe this city out. We'll steal that. And then we'll just do some pillaging. Uh, we will keep that city. And we'll talk to him next turn because he'll update his uh, evaluation of the war. Okay, so here is Taiwan. Um, I'd like more trade routes. I'd actually like to get, get more traders. We'll go for that. Um, right. I definitely want to promote Reina here to get the tourism from Great Works. So I'm going to start promoting her. And foreign exchange is a good one. Tax collector, curator. And then I might assign her to the capital where the most tourism... Well, let's double check where the most tourism is being generated. Yeah, it looks like it's in the capital. Now, Pingala is currently boosting my um, science and thingy in here. But I think I'd like to get the extra tourism. So I'm going to reassign Reina to my capital. And then I'll look for another city that generates a decent amount of culture and science. I had Moksha established here purely for the religious pressure, so I think I'll assign this guy here. And then I'll assign Moksha to uh, Lindsay. That'll give me a little bit of pressure over here. Okay, we'll harvest that, then we'll get to work on the Renaissance walls. You are going to go explore the other continent now, and we'll go to the next turn. John Curtin is still gaining tourists, or, or yeah, domestic tourists, rather. Can't use all these guys. I want to wait until I get ideology to swap in the thing. You go ahead and steal cash here. The Statue of Liberty is under construction over here. Okay, and this turn we're going to talk to Teddy and see if he would like to uh, get peace. Knowledge of military tactics. Alright, Teddy. I will give you back your city, but you must give me everything. Excellent. I don't know if I have room for Metamorphosis, but I'll get peace with him anyway. We get a nice chunk of gold. Oh, and my units get kicked around. Let's see if France can take that back. Right, we got a shrine over here for the extra faith. Um, art museum makes a lot of sense. I need to keep an eye out for a particular great scientist that I'm hunting for that gives extra tourism from artifacts. I don't think it's been earned yet. Uh, we could get an art museum. We could... We don't need a factory. 
I think I'll take one turn to finish the monument to think about that. You're going to join there. You'll come here. Okay, let's have a look at what this city is working. It's working unimproved hills. So we shall improve one of those. That'll shave some turns off of that. You should really be building builders. I'm going to get my rider to head over to here because there's a new amphitheater coming up that we'll be able to place those great works of writing into. And we're waiting for the ideology boost. The city is producing a lot of production. <clears throat> you wait there. You're going to head over to this way. And I think also this series has been going on for a while, so I might extend the episodes a little bit to make them last longer. My troops are really passing by. We're literally in a truce. I don't know what you want from me. There's ideology. So we are going to switch in um, the 15% production bonus towards industrial era and later wonders. And now this will shave 10 turns off, which feels pretty good to me. Uh, we want to get democracy as soon as possible because we get the plus one housing and the production per district. And it'll also make our gold purchases cheaper, which means, for example, if we purchase uh, Gustav Eiffel, he'll be a lot cheaper in terms of gold. I do need to earn more gold. Um, I do need an art museum. Do I have an art museum being built? That's the hard thing to tell. I don't think I do. So I think, although this city has good enough production to support an archaeological museum so i think i'm going to prioritize that and then i might build the art museum over here where it's a slightly lower production generally speaking you want to build the art museums in your lower production cities because uh it's a little bit harder to build it's a little bit harder to build the archaeological museum and the archaeologist so you kind of want to use particular cities for those particular tasks um I'm going to liberate this to France. That'll improve their relationship with me. They might even get alliance with them. Let's see, make a deal. You don't need... What would you give me for Niter? You'd give me all your gold for Niter. I'll take it. I don't need Niter. I'm not using it for anything, but I do need as much gold as I can get. Uh, let's talk to Yaya Varman as well. What would you give me for coal? Did I already give you coal? It's hard to remember. Even the smallest amount of gold is kind of worth it here. I'll tell you what, I just wiped out some of my warmonger penalty, so I'm going to wait a turn and see how the world perceives me then. I think that's a good move, because they should, maybe with my warmonger penalty reduced, they'll be a little bit more willing to, uh, to be friendly. How would you like to get peace? You want 99 gold per turn? Nope. So there's a, there's a distinct probability that I don't get this guy. Let's just get all these units back to our main area. So now, would you give me a better deal? Uh, who was I talking to? Was it Poland? No, you still don't give me a very good deal. What if I gave you all of these luxuries? So you'll take that deal. Plus how much gold per turn? 294 gold. Sure. I just need as much gold as possible to get the best chance I have 
purchasing goes to have Eiffel. It might even be worth my while to work uh, industrial zone projects. I want a farm here. I think there's actually a decent farm triangle here. Just get all these guys to wait. I prefer to make them wait rather than... Okay, it's down to 18 turns. Now, some people might not agree with expending him straight away because of the potential to lose it, but I figured there's no real huge difference there. <clears throat> we'll, uh, we'll either get it or we won't. And we shall see. All right, we finished the amphitheater over here. That means we can create more great works of writing. Then... Uh, I need so much stuff here. Um, none of these wonders are particularly great. They're very expensive. And they don't give a huge amount. The question is, do I want an art museum? How close am I to getting another artist? I'm pretty far away from another artist. It could be worth my while to just focus on getting stuff like uh, another campus up to get my science and come up. <clears throat> so clearly the walls are damaged here. We want to repair those. Renaissance walls completed here. Now it's important to remember, Renaissance walls, right? Uh, a lot of people were questioning why I build these. These are currently giving me uh, all of these walls together. All this production I invested into these walls is giving me a total of um, <clears throat> a total of six tourism and two signs. That's pretty reasonable. Like that's 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 decent, and I think that, that that's worthwhile doing. Actually, France, how would you like to establish a resident embassy and make a friendship? Okay, she won't do a friendship right now because I'm friends with some people she's at war with. Uh, more trade routes. I need to get. I need to actually build those trade routes. Uh, so I need to find a city that has some free production time. Chop there. You get up there. You wait there. Continuing to explore. We'll go to the next turn. Unit needs orders over here. Uh, I'm going to get you to heal up. You're crossing the border. So I need to find time to build these traders, and i got to figure out where I'm going to do it. It's probably going to be here. Let's see. Let's get those Renaissance walls. We want these walls up as fast as possible. Okay. And that's another advantage of building walls, is that you're combat ready. When your opponent eventually rolls in. Alright, you really want ancient walls and stuff in here, so I'm going to grab that. I could attack here, but I'm not going to. I want to play reactively. We're going to place a farm here. This city now has great food production. Uh, really bad production production, though. Needs a builder. To run around here improving these tiles. Need to get rid of this uh, so I can put a mine there. And Another great work. You're waiting there, you're waiting there. Steal money for me. God, I really want. God, I really want Gustav Eiffel. It makes getting the Eiffel Tower so much easier. But Australia is is one of those sieves that just always makes it really difficult to get that stuff. Medieval walls, and we'll put a mine down there. Yeah, but these walls are all worth uh, tourism and p potential future science. Alright, so we've got diggers coming into our land as well. Alright, we're going to pa pass on this guy because we don't particularly want it. <clears throat> well, let's double check. The science boost would be nice. Bring these guys forward. 
Now, these guys are going to be tough as hell because they're really good at fighting on coast and outside their borders. So it's going to be a rough fight. Do I have a unit that I could upgrade into that would give me a little bit more city combat power? No. Nice, we finished two walls in as many turns. I think you can come up onto this now. You're going to keep stealing gold from me. Keep scouting with this guy. There's Mount Roraima. That'll give me a little bit of an era score. Help me avoid a Dark Age. Let's go to the next turn. So fighting these diggers is going to be tough. Um, yeah, see... Now, he will make peace, and I will take that peace immediately, because he has diggers on my territory that I don't really have a way to fight. We lost a single unit for that. That was fine. We do have a new great person we can earn. It's probably a great rider. It is. Uh, Renaissance walls have been completed down here. Let's go ahead and spend a bit of time getting a trader. Oh, this city does not have the production to get a trader. The city does not have the production at all. Full stop. End of that sentence. <clears throat> The Great Wall will go one, two, something like this, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, I think putting a holy site. Oh man. Get that workshop. You need it. You need it badly. Okay, now we can fortify all these units because we don't have a use for them because we're not at war. I didn't mean to put you asleep. I meant to just skip your turn. You still don't have anywhere we can put this great work. It's okay, we have other priorities right now. Getting our uh, renaissance walls up and stuff. We can take a peek at the culture game right now. We're at 45 out of 133. You can see we're getting tourism pressure against all of these civilizations. We're four turns from suffrage, which will make it potentially purchasable here. 25% discount. You can fortify. My word, this is just barbarian island over here. It's weird, because I don't remember that always happening back on launch. Well, maybe it did. It's like a weird map script, uh, map generator script bug. It just generates these weird little useless strips of land that just are filled with barbarians. It's an interesting one, for sure. Art museum completed here. You can start placing these. Um, I'd love to finish this campus, but I also need to prioritize traders. Because I'm missing out on a lot of gold from that. He's up to 20 per turn. Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to get this. We're 13 turns from being able to be... From being locked out of all future Renaissance walls. So we want to make sure we've at least started them. Everywhere. Let's have a look at who we're trading with right now. Um, <clears throat> we're not trading with France. It's not a very good trade route, but... It's a bit of gold. Another trader. Create another great work. We're up to 303 tourism per turn. That's pretty decent so far. We can make it bigger though. Let's get open borders with Australia uh, for the extra tourism boost. He wants too much for that, and I don't want to give him 100 gold, because 100 gold could be the difference. We have, like, four turns. Four turns to get enough gold. I don't think we're going to be able to pull it off. 
uh, unless we start selling something. We could do the uh, the the glitch. I don't know where we're just like, hey, give me all your gold. Um, so he would give me twenty gold per turn. So that's like this plus five or six, four. So since we have nowhere else to put our great works in music, I'm just going to sell one off. Then create a new one. Just need to get a little bit more gold. To be able to snag this so he can't get it. I'm going to be pretty, pretty sad if he gets it. But yeah, he got it. All right. Not much. Nah, you know. What are you gonna do? We're gonna have to hard build the uh, we're gonna have to hard build the Eiffel Tower, which sucks, but it is what it is. Okay, there is suffrage. We're gonna plug into suffrage, into democracy immediately. It's gonna give us a decent boost of our production. All right, uh, arsenal of democracy is important. Uh, commercial hub, harbor adjacency, New Deal is important. Extra goal, extra amenities and housing. Then we need plus one production in every city seems pretty reasonable. Uh, monarchic legacy for the extra three housing in every city that we have walls in. Then we'll go ahead and grab triangular trade for extra gold. Industrial zone adjacency, extra production. But we're eight turns from finishing the Crystal Red and Tour. We have a lot more housing across our empire. If I just go through, you see we're you know, 21, 8, 13, 22, all these nice housing numbers, you see. So we can grow pretty damn big. All right, now that we've finished Suffrage, it might be good here to take the five-year plan by finishing Class Struggle. We definitely want to get shopping malls. Oh, did I forget the place? Did I forget the place neighborhoods? I totally forgot to place neighborhoods. All right, well, that's a big mistake. So what you want to do is you want to place neighborhoods everywhere, but you don't actually build them. Um, we are going to go for the National History Museum because that'll give us the ability to build our thingies. We don't actually finish the neighborhoods yet, but we do want to place them because that'll make them cheaper in the long run. Right now, they're pretty expensive. Um, there's a farm triangle there. This would kill a farm triangle. Can't put anything on this anyways. We'll put it there. Neighborhood. Doesn't need to be good appeal. It just needs to be placed. I think as good as that industrial zone is. God, I need that too. I'm going to place the neighborhood there. Go ahead and get me the archaeologist. Go to sleep. Next great work. So we missed out on the important guy for building the Eiffel Tower rapidly. We'll still be able to get the Eiffel Tower. Um, but it'll just take a while. Do we have room for it somewhere? Not really. It's going to be rough to find a place for it. Uh, probably going to have to be built in Handan, which is a decent city to do it. <clears throat> right there, I'm thinking. Far from ideal. Can you actually steal money? Uh, linguist. Completing your missions faster is nice. Very nice. We'll go to the next turn. Okay. So, uh, we just, see, we would have been able to purchase it this turn. Um, I may as well take James Watt here. It would help this city out a lot. No, I'm going to hold on to that money. 
Um, so let's take a moment here to analyze our current game and board state. We're going to be getting the Crystal Red on tour, which is core for getting all the seaside resorts up later on in the game. We're making our way towards the Eiffel Tower, which is another core thing that works really well with getting our tourism up. We need to make a decision about where our national parks are going. I know we have a few, um, but we're getting up to the point now where we'll be soon be able to purchase a naturalist and actually place one. Um, so we're not too far away from that. And getting one over here would be pretty reasonable. In my opinion, we need builders as well. We've been seriously neglecting our builder um, count. So I might have to pick a city and just crap out builders from it. Because we have the builder card slotted in, but we're not really using it, which kind of sucks. Um, never feels good to have that happen. So since he got the thing and I don't need the money anymore, uh, I will get open borders with John Curtin. Usually the AI will take open borders for just 100 gold. No matter, like, like if I say, well, this, this is like, what, 300 gold over 30 turns or something. Whereas if I just say, hey, here's 100 gold, they'll almost always accept this deal. So that's a little tip. I don't know if I already said that in this series, but there you go. Open borders are really important for culture victories. As you can see here, the bottom most thing here, it says overall tourism boosted by 21% for open borders. So that's going to help us out quite a bit. <clears throat> As you can see, he is up to, uh, see, as you can see, Teddy's um, domestic tourists have gone down because our tourism pressure is eating into him. So this number is going to reduce until we can't, I, I think it's oh, until these are equal. I, I'm not sure though. I can't remember exactly. It's something I'll have to kind of, it's been a long time since I actually dug into the mechanics and paid attention to exactly how they worked. I usually just kind of play around how my knowledge of them works and what I know works to win the game. Uh, so in terms of promotions here, usually I will take the things that are uh, either the applicable in the most situations or applicable in helping me win the game or applicable in preventing an enemy from winning the game. So if we look here, Cat Burglar would help me win the game, but you have to remember, I don't have really, really my problem isn't generating great works. My problem is having room for great work. So I don't need more great works. Um, and Australia isn't a threat for winning a culture game. Demolitions, yeah, okay, I could sabotage his industrial zones. Eh, not too sold on that one. Rocket scientist, on the other hand, being able to dis disrupt um, the rocket, the spaceports, particularly of someone like John Curtin, who is typically very, very strong in science. As you can see here, he's generating 240 science per turn. He's got 43 text research. He's almost certainly going to be competitive in going for a scientific victory. Be having a higher chance of pillaging his spaceport districts and delaying his ability to win the game, that's really high value. That's also why I took Linguist on the other uh, spy because Linguist is applicable in a lot more situations than the other two promotions that were presented. I can't remember what the other two were, but uh, you'll just have to believe me. All right, we are finishing an industrial zone. I am quite tempted to take to take this guy. We'll probably get him uh, for cheaper later. So we completed a trader in here. We want to trade with our allies so who are we not trading with is the question well we also need to ask the question where are we building the eiffel tower because that's where we want to centralize our trade routes right now most of our trade routes are from kind of the capital or random cities so we want them to go from uh i think we're going to be building the eiffel tower let's let's have a moment here i'll wrap this episode up in a second but i do want to double check what's the production like chengdu 36 44 39 in chen no room in chen handan okay so handan what was the other one jian chengdu and chen i think it was yeah so i think handan's our best bet since it's the one with the actual open slot so we're going to send our traders over there to be able to squeeze out that extra little bit, bit of production that'll help us finish the Eiffel Tower in a reasonable amount of time. Um, in terms of our capital, we want to keep getting trade routes. Uh, let's get the industrial zone here. I really need the theater square up. As much as I'd love to get this workshop, because it would be worth plus, f plus six production, actually, if we put three in there. 
I don't mind getting these up to three for the plus two. Let's get the workshop. I could actually purchase the workshop and then build a theater square. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I think that works a little bit better for the speed of the game that I'm at. I need to use this gold to help me develop. And our gold generation is going up since we have more spies. Actually, out of curiosity, can I build another spy? Yeah, I can. So I'm actually going to prioritize the spy over a trade route because I believe spies have a higher uh, return value than traders do. Even if it is kind of RNG and a little bit unreliable, I think it, in general, has a higher return. So somebody stole a great work from me. That's fine. That's actually totally reasonable because I can just create a new one to replace it. So we want to trade with someone who we're not trading with and who we are allied with. Let's have a look here. We're trading with Catherine. We're trading with Poland. We're not trading with Australia. We're trading with Yai Varman. We're not trading with him. So I believe I'm allied with Gandhi, but I can't reach him. So unable to reach those particular people, I'm going to trade with Poland or one of my other allies. Uh, so you can see here, Anchor Tom. 56631. That's a really, really good yield. We've got a 45921 or a 458121. I think I like the idea of getting a little bit of extra culture and science. Production is just so important, though, is the problem. So we'll trade there. Okay, we're getting good scouts off here. We want to scout Australia now so that we can see where his spaceports come down. So it's really important to uh, get open borders with them and, and go scout them. Uh, makes your life a lot easier when you're trying to prevent them from winning the game. All right, I'm supposed to end this episode in, in a second here. All right, I'll call this I'll call this the end of the episode. I'd say we're at a pretty reasonable position. We've done a little bit of analysis. We're about to get the uh, Eiffel Tower We've got Renaissance walls up in almost every city. Uh, we're working on it in a couple of other ones, um, which will net us. Again, remember, these are going to net me six base tourism. That tourism is then going to be multiplied by 100% when we get to computers. So that's going to be 12 tourism per city. Then that tourism is going to further be modified by any modifiers we have. So, for example, here with France, we have a total modifier of... Um, 50 minus 18 is 32. We have 32 percent, so uh, 12 multiplied by 32 percent, so it's about about 16, 17, 17 ish, um, 16 ish. Let's call it 16. We're getting 16 tourism per turn against essentially each city in the game f per city, and that's a lot. That's a lot of tourism. That's the bulk of our current tourism, and as you can see, we're already a quarter of the way. Or, uh, yeah, but I'd say this is about a quarter because I expect John Curtin to earn a lot more tourists before we win the game. I expect I expect us to need to have about 200 and 240 ish before we finish the game because he's going to generate a lot of tourism in particular when he gets closer to spaceports and he launches the um, moon landing. He's going to get a huge boost of tourism uh, of culture, which is going to make it harder to uh, take him out in terms of culture. But yeah, I hope I hope this is still educational. I'm a little bit scatterbrained because I'm sick. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the series so far. Please remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Remember to leave a like if you want to directly support my channel. And remember to leave a comment if you want to give me your feedback. Other than that, I want to say I love you all very much. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.